Okay, so we have a staircase that we have to apply urethane to now. And the challenge of this is the fact that there's only one way down here, and that's the way I'm coming down. So, how do you possibly put urethane on a staircase if you cannot go downwards? Well, there's a trick to it. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all the cutting in on the nosing and the edges going downwards. Then as I come up, I'm going to roller the tread and then I can exit the way I came in. I can't wait around here eight hours for the urethane to dry. That's my plan and I'm sticking to it. This gel will be applying Fabulon Satin Urethane. So I also have a nosing here and the only access I'm gonna to have to this front edge is by doing it as I go down the stairs. So you can see here now, when you're applying the urethane, you wanna, you're, you're basically just laying urethane. You're not, it's not paint. So this is a, a, a really important factor to remember. Um, after you apply the urethane, you basically can just let it sit. You don't have to, um, it's not necessary to continually go over the urethane with the brush or the roller because I'm using a roller, a lint-free roller to apply uh, when I do the stairs and the floor, the, the general stairs and the floor. Um, but basically all you're looking to do is um, is lay the urethane, right? You want to put a good liberal amount on there, so you know you get a good foundation and a good base. We're going to be screen sanding in between coats, vacuuming and tacking. Now, what I was telling you earlier was basically the only way to get out of this staircase is I can do the edges, right? So I'm applying to the edge of the stairs. And the nosings as I go down. Now this is you only need to do it this way if you don't have a second way out of the basement. Or now, if you're just doing it for yourself at home, all you, ha all you have to do is skip a step. But there are time constraints for me here because they don't want me here two weeks to finish the job. So as a contractor, it's a little different story than if you are doing it for yourself at home and there's really no time constraints. You know, that way you could just go ahead and alternate your stairs and do one tread one day and the next and the next day. That's the way I would do it if, if I lived here. But I don't live here. And, you know, there's time limitations because they're, they're you know, now they're have to stay off the floor, they can't get into their kitchen, there's all kinds of reasons why time is a factor. Um, so that's why I have to do it this way. But it is doable. It certainly is doable. We just have to make sure that we cover everything. And don't worry about the sides of the stringers and the, and the risers. I'm going to be, I'm going to be removing that that stain that got uh, put there. I'm going to be removing that with thinner. And also, they will be. The intention here is they're going to be painting the risers and the stringers after I'm done. So it's not a major concern for anybody. Now we are only doing two coats on this job, so you know it's necessary to apply a nice liberal coat to make sure that everything 
everything's covered. Okay, so now I'm going to come back and I'm going to roll her and I'm going to start from the bottom and go up. So we just walk on the dry spots that are stained. Avoid the urethane. I also did the front of the nosing on the landing here. I can do that after. Okay, I've added a bit of the, one of the tricks I do is you can add a bit of the stain into your urethane. And it actually, as long, you know, as, long as it's the same um, stain, or it could even be, you know, it could even be slightly lighter, but if it's a dark like this one, it's not gonna matter. But yeah, so because I'm going way down there first, I'm just gonna leave my tray on the landing here. Load up the applicator. This is a lint-free roller. And I like to use the, the six mil rollers, six or seven, or the 10, but I find, just find the six or seven are, are pretty good. So I'll make my way down here. At this point here, I can reach there. And remember, I've already cut in. Again, this is only if you're in a situation where you have to, there are time constraints, and you have to get the job done. And, you know, if you're able to skip treads, then you can just do that. But in this situation, I've already had to delay the job one day because of the dry time on the stain and since I did that it's now necessary for me to it's now necessary for me to get this coat done now so I can then coat tomorrow and have the job completed
you want to be careful you don't have too much on the roller so it's going to drip all the way down so you just make sure it's it's covered nicely So the key here is just a nice even coverage and once it's covered you don't see any funny drips or buildups of urethane and you can move on. You gotta really be careful doing this. Another challenge here for me is I'm holding the camera in my left hand. I'm entirely doing this with one hand, so you need to hire me a camera. Now you see by mixing this stain in there, you're adding some of the you're adding some of the pigment and the tone that could get lifted. Because when, when you go to apply your first coat of urethane, uh, especially with these heavily pigmented stains, you'll notice that the... So that's an important point. When you go to apply the urethane, uh, the first coat with a brand new clean roller, or if you're using an applicator, on these heavily pigmented stains, when you make that first pass, um, you're going to lift off the stain. It's going to just want to grab that roller so if it's perfectly clean. So adding a bit of the stain to your first coat of urethane, it really kind of negates or, you know what I mean? It, it just, um, yeah, it negates that lifting off and, and making it all light because uh, the whole thing about a dark stain is they want, you know, they want it to be dark. So, they, you know, if you're going to be lifting it off, it's just going to cause you problems. And, and that's why you want to have a bit of the stain on your you don't have to do it coats after but on that first coat you want to add the stain into your urethane for the first coat only for sure um, if it is a little bit left over after if you have some in your can for the following day it's fine it's not going to cause an issue because uh, you know it's a it's a minor amount and it's going to blend right because your floor is already that stain color anyway so anyway, this is something you can think about when you're applying your stain. Okay, so we've applied the urethane to the landing and the top tread. Now it's time to start the floor. Urethane, ebony floor. And stairs. Satin urethane.